Yeah, this is Bang Bang Ray Hall. Please uh, press the like button and subscribe. Yeah, my old mate, uh, what, I think he's been dead now about, what, two years, year and a half? A guy called Peter Gibbs. Uh, he, he was a dangerous man. Peter's done some bird, mate. He's been away a long, long time in his life, yeah? Um, he was the greatest forger going. Not only was he a forger, but he was dangerous. And the craze was petrified of him, mate. He was, a dang he was so dangerous. He used to knock about all that lot, mate. Billy Hills and all that little firm. Long time ago, Peter Gibbs, mate. Very dangerous man. Uh, I met Peter Gibbs. Um, I was just going down a pub called The Anchor in Bollywood Road. I met Peter Gibbs in his, full of tattoos. Stocky guy. Always walks around with a great big carving knife or a gun. He's a very, he's a, he's a, he was a nutcase. He was, he died. He died of a heart attack. Um, but Peter, uh, me and Peter got on really, really well, believe it or not, you know, I've got being, being as a guy like that, because it's against my grain, isn't it? He's got guns, and he's quite duck, walks around with knives, and, and I'm, then I'm thinking, well, he's a threat to me, isn't he? You never, never know, he's going to stab me, shoot me, or whatever. So but I made a mate of him, he was a good mate. And he lived in a place called Stanwell, and by, right by Heathrow Airport, and, you know, he had a, a little dog, um, lovely little dog, mate. But he used to be the, he used to be such a good forger. There's people out there. I might have said this before. I don't know, but there's people out there who have got the craze pictures, and they're not the craze pictures because this geezer used to mimic the, the craze paintings. Yeah, he was fantastic at it, as well as giving the signatures out of it. And the leak, he used to pick glass up, um, go places. Like antique shops, not so much antique shops as charity shops, yeah. Go in there, look at glass, a nice piece of glass, a nice piece of glass. He used to put a little leak on it, and he was fantastic at, at, at doing them sort of forgeries. But he was a dangerous man, yeah. And what he used to do, Peter, uh, when he got into this place in Stanwall, it was um, Winston Churchill used to go there, uh, used to go there and relax to get away from all the nutcases in London and all that. It's go to Stanwall and relax. And upstairs, uh, it's, it's downstairs was all garages, really, really old-fashioned, really old-fashioned. Upstairs, really old-fashioned, you know, the, the big hobs, really old-fashioned. And downstairs, uh, the garages, they had all them wooden uh, wooden carts, um, uh, you know, and, and, and stuff like that, and old cars that was in the garages. But that Peter... Uh, got into them and sold everything. Peter sold everything what was there, he sold it. And as I say, I went down there and uh, Peter showed me around the place. The place was massive. It was absolutely massive. And um, you could walk around the grounds and see these little deers running around. And uh, and what it was belonged to uh, a king, an Arabian, Arabian king, I think it was, on Iraq, 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 Iraq or Iran, Arabian or whatever it was, yeah. And he lived there with his son, his son died, and, uh, you know, he left it to his son, his son died, and he just gave up. All the houses pulled down, and because it's on gravel, they, this firm is gravel, do a lot of gravel pitting in there, taking it all, massive, it's huge, yeah? And there's all, as I say, there's all these gravel pits, and it's so deep down there, the water in there's blue, yeah? That's how deep it is. And Peter used to get me, they had big walls around this place, but really old bricks, really old stocks, yeah? And I used to go around there, knocking the bricks down and stacking them up and selling the bricks, yeah? And getting good money, getting good money for two pound a brick, one pound fifty for a brick. I mean, you're getting thousands of bricks, you know, just thousands and thousands of bricks. So I was getting good money. And as so I said, Peter sold all the carts. He sold all the cars. Um, and then there was a great big barn there, and all the stuff that had come out of all these garages downstairs, about 10 of them, yeah? He used to put grows in them, yeah? Uh, cannabis grows. And I left. I didn't... I, cannabis grows, I don't get involved in that crap. I left, yeah? But now and again, I come back to say he was, and he was, Peter used to plot up on his grounds and plot up with guns and things like that, and anybody would go down there a bit nutty, he used to shoot and bump two twos, yeah? Crazy, man, that is a fruitcake. Handguns, big machetes, everything. 
and it was dangerous to get down there, mate. And he and this barn, he had uh, two tents, massive two tents in his barn, and he was doing grows in there. And um, one of the guys in there was a bit flash. Uh, Peter never trusted him. He did not trust his kid at all. He didn't trust him at all, mate. He didn't like him. He didn't trust him. But we was going down the calf and had breakfast. I was just pay for a bit of breakfast, this, that, and the other in Stanwall. And go back to his gaff, he says, I don't trust this guy, he mate, you've been nicking, I think he's been nicking my grows. I went, no, leave off, Peter, you're a bit, you're a bit, bit paranoid, because Peter used to take lots of sulphate. But when I say take lots of it, he used to take lots and lots of sulphate. He's the boy, the paste, you know, and uh, it's just too much, swallow it. And he had uh, a spray that he used to put under his tongue, yeah, if he was like... Um, in a bad way, if he felt like an heart attack coming or something. And he used to do it all the time. He used to spray crazy, you know, always having heart attacks because of the sulphate, yeah? But, it, it, I mean, not enough to kill him, yeah, but enough to, like, really get, do him in. Like, when I say do him in, do him in I mean, the geese is laying in bed for days and days and days, yeah? And the gaff was like, well, his place was like a, um, like a pit, you know, there's things everywhere. Everywhere there was, it was just a, a complete mess there, yeah? and his flats. And Peter was ill for about what four or five days, and the guy that looked after his grows, uh, looked after his tents. Um, Peter's come out and he said that oh, things have gone missing, this, that, and the other. I'm not happy about it. Uh, I can't swim, I can swim, but I'm not a good swimmer, you know. I know geezer can swim miles. I could maybe swim, uh, what, four or five lengths more underwater than I can on top because that's what I do. I go underwater rather than swim on top, yeah? Anyway, Peter's got the right up with this guy, the real bad up with this guy. And it, it, we are back onto the pits, back onto these pits, yeah? And Peter's, you can see the anger in Peter saying, this is Nick, this is, so I said, leave off Peter, you took nothing, mate, you know what I mean? Leave, he's, you're paranoid, you're being ill, you know, the kid works, I can see his work, where do you are, Peter, for you, you know what I mean? Leave him alone. Out of nowhere, the kid's standing uh, down, down by the pit, um, he's doing a little bit of fishing down there, and Peter's come up behind him and hit him with a bit of wood, and the kid fell in the, in, in the water. You know, and this is deep, this was so deep. He's fell in the water, the kid. I can't swim. I, well, I, can, I told you I can swim, but I can swim, uh, what, three, four, five lengths, but not, you know, miles. But I used to like going underwater, you know. Listen, I had a pair of boots on. Well, I chucked my boots off in seconds, yeah. I dived into the water. The water was absolutely freezing cold. I dived into the water, the geezer had gone down about 20 feet, something like that. I mean, the pressure, the pressure that I had on my head. I grabbed hold of the kid around the, around the neck and I'm pulling, trying to pull up, yeah? And he's not coming up, but then eventually, I got him to come up with me, yeah? And I got the kid at the top and I pulled him over to the side of the water and because the pits went down like that, yeah? And I could walk on this mud, walk on it to get him up, pull him up. And Peter's going, leave him, let him, let him drown, let him drown. I said, no, Peter. I pulled him up, yeah. I started bump, pumping his chest and breathing through his mouth. I did what I wanted, didn't want to do, but I'd done it. And all the kid put up. Anyway, in the end, the kid survived, yeah. And I said, Peter, mate, you've got to knock this on the edge. You know what I mean? You're gonna, you can't do that to people. You can't go around trying to kill people, mate. You know what I mean? And the case was a nutcase, a complete nutcase. And he just walked off with the ump with his dog, pissed off completely with his dog. I said to the guy, do sort of favour. I say you what to do, mate. You know what you've got to do? You've got to take most of these plants, bag it up, put it in the back of your car and piss off and don't ever come back here again, mate. Because I tell you what, if you come back here again, he's going to kill you. It's too dangerous, yeah? Do sort of favour. Put it anyway. I'm, I'm cutting the plants for him, cutting them, cutting them, cutting, put them in a the bag, tying the bags up, put them in the boot of the car. It goes away, yeah. And uh, I'm sort of sitting there in the, in the in the green. It's a nice sunny day. Peter's come back. 
He's gone, where's all my stuff? Where's all my stuff gone? You took my stuff. I said, not me, mate. I said, I don't know what's going on. Car, not me. Where am I You want to do it? He went, where's the other fella? I said, I don't know. I've not seen him. He's took my gear. He's cut all my plants. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. He's dead. I said, Peter, behave yourself, mate. Behave yourself. Behave myself. Behave myself. I said, you should talk. <laughs> I would kill him. I want to kill him, you know what I mean? I want to punch his lights out. He's, he's dangerous, yeah? He said to me, you better go. You better go. I went, Pete, mate, I'm going. I said, you won't see me again, brother. I said, I'm going. You're too dangerous. I said, you've got to leave that sulfate alone. That sulfate base is killing you, mate. And it's making you so paranoid, yeah? He went. I went. And the uh, next thing you know, I got a phone call to say that he died. Um, and he died of an heart attack. I mean, he's had so many heart attacks, you know. He just died of an heart attack. And when I got in his place, that was unbelievable what he got in there, mate. He had so many forgeries and paintings. He had so many watches, forgery watches that he, that, that he used to do. Everything he had in his place was forgery, yeah. And when I went to the uh, to where he had all, all his tents, they opened all the garages up, and the garages was full up with puff, full up with it. I'm not on about plants. I'm on about full up with puff. He had it all in bags. This is what the geezer was like, yeah. Rather than rather than let someone have an earner, right? Rather than let someone have an earner, he'd keep it for himself, right? And then sell it in bits. But it was so old that it was it, it was gone mildew, you know what I mean? In plastic bags, big bags. And a lot of it wasn't, but a lot of it was, yeah. He had what, six, seven garages full of puff, you know what I mean? Full of it in plastic bags. And, I, and it makes me feel sick uh, to know that he let it sort of go that bad. Rather than let someone have a little earner, it'd have rather just let it go and meld you, yeah? It's the same uh, with the uh, with the carts, all the carts he had from the old times, Winston Churchill times, all the old cars he found in there that he sold, got lots of money for them, he never gave anybody a tanner. And yet everybody used to work around him, yeah? But all the flats upstairs, they all cleaned the flats, painted the flats, all the old hobs in there, the old, the old, the old car stein hobs, they polished them all up, Made them beautiful, made it all, everything stunning, yeah? And yet, and yet, he never let anybody stay there. And the people that own that place would be, I don't know, uh, the council, the crowd, I don't know what it would be, yeah? They never even give him permission to be on there. He just got on there, they just let it go. They just let the place do it, you know, they don't care about it. The electrics, he pumped into electrics and got it all working. Uh, but we all walked up to the stairs to the flats and there was a lot of them hunter spiders. Hunters, they call them. Loads of spiders up there, mate. Big spiders with big fangs. Hunters, I think they call them. But, mate, there was loads in there. I don't know what it was about that place. Um, but do you know what? I was gutted that he died. He was a mate. I was gutted because the potential in that place... Was was this crazy, mate? It take you a day walk around it, and there was so much around there, mate. So many antiques, just the laying there, you know, what I mean? laying there, and it was beautiful to think. Winston Churchill used to stay there a lot, yeah. Stanwall, yeah, Stanwall, and it's at, and when you go into this gaff, it's right, out, it's, it's it's in the middle of nowhere. It's in the middle of nowhere, and. You, as you go in there, to the right of it, you can't even go over this little bridge. There's a stream, yeah? And Peter showed me with the dog, walked through, walked through all these bushes, and that little stream goes into a great big pond. Massive, massive pond. And in the pond, right, there's carp in there, 35, 40, 50 pound of carp. They're massive, mate. You see him in there chasing fish. Chasing his fish and they're jumping out of the water, this carp. 
Someone told me they're barbel, but I don't know if it's you know, barbel and a cop, but these people are saying they're barbel, and other people are saying no, they're not barbel, barbel could live in there, be cop. And they were massive, yeah? Massive. Peter, you couldn't even, listen, he wouldn't even let people go in there fishing. He's caught travellers in there fishing, and all he wants to do is kill them. You know what I mean? He wants to kill them. They go in and they get a boat. What Peter had on the, on, on the Stanwell uh, uh, site, that's a big thing he had, he had a great big wooden boat, yeah? You know, like rowing boats, but a big one, big old-fashioned thing. And the travellers would come in when Pete was in his house about a mile away, take the boat and put the boat on the pond, this big lake, yeah, and go fishing. So what Peter decided to do, right, why? Why, why would he want to do that? Was puncher the boat. P puncher it, yeah? But not with big punches, so you'd notice it, but with like a spike pump for the woods, punch it. About 20, 30 things, right? So when the travellers took the boat out for a thing, the water would rush in and it would sink, yeah. <laughs> He's mad. He was mad. He was mad, mate. He was off his nut. And, you know, come out there one day and there's no boat. The boat's gone. He goes to the, he goes to the lake with this big pond thing. The boat sunk. Where are the travellers? I suppose they're gone. They just left it and gone, you know what I mean? But why? Because the boat was absolutely stunning, the rowing boat, the old-fashioned rowing boat. He could have got a fortune for that alone. What he had in one of these uh, garages, he had some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fireplaces. Marble and cast iron fireplaces. You'd, they was, they was just unbelievable. The marble ones, mate, with the cast backs to them, must have been worth eight grand, nine grand each, 10 grand each. Thick marble, all figures in them and everything, you know, but he wouldn't sell them. He wouldn't sell them. He just said, no, 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 no one's giving me the money for them. So what he'd rather do is leave them in there. No one can go and have an earn with him because he doesn't want you to have an earn. He thinks you're going you're gonna to rump him. You're going to rump him. And I was just like, Peter, Peter, why don't you behave yourself, mate? Don't you tell me what to do. I'll do what I want to do. Just get out, go. You know what, it's a shout and scream, man. You know what I mean, go mad. You know, and, 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 but it, what he was with him, it was like, you knew you'd have to keep an eye on him 24-7. You, when he go there, Right, you go, when you go to see him, right, you got to be on your on your ball, mate. you got to be on your ball. You can't let him disappear because he could be around the back of you and stab you in the back. I mean, I'm joking and bury you, mate. That's Peter to a T. You know what I mean? Peter Gibbs, mate. Peter Gibbs, a uh, very, very dangerous man. Very, very dangerous man. A very, very dangerous... And everything Peter done was dangerous, yeah? When he, when he done grows... Dangerous because he was okay when the grow was being done, but once the grow was done and it was cut and it was hanging, Peter become really, really dangerous because he then knew that there was money to be earned, yeah, and he wanted it. He wanted it a lot. Rather than give you, rather than give you ten grand and he earned fifty grand, he would not do that. He wanted to earn a sixty grand. You know what I mean? Rather than give you 10 grand, he wanted to run a 60 grand. So what he used to do, put it in bags and put it in the garages. And it's the smell and stink and everything like that. And this gun melts you. You know, Peter's, um, Peter was just an uh, unbelievable man, yeah? Unbelievable man that got very sad. Lived by himself with his dog. Just got sad, mate. Just got sad. And, you know, everybody, everybody he believed around him was out to was causing problems was out to kill him, and no one was out to kill him. Everybody was wanting to help him, yeah? He had a beautiful woman. She was absolutely so nice, and yet he treated her like a bag of shit. It's a shame, mate. It's a shame that someone like that, you know, he, but he died. I was gutted that he, the way he died, you know what I mean? In bed, um, had no one there to help him. He only had the dog, because no one wanted to be with him, because he was so dangerous and so mad, always screaming and shouting. I mean, to take him to a calf, uh, and and to take him to a calf was hard work. I just got a calf with him, me and my mate and somebody else, got a calf with him. 
And he'd go mad about an egg not being done properly, or sausage not being done properly, or the chips are too hard, or the chips are too done. He, he couldn't, and the butter's not enough butter on the bread, you know, and the tea, tea leaves. I said, what tea leaves? It's, it's tea bags, mate. Yeah, but the tea leaves have come out of the tea bag. Oh. Or the milk, not enough milk, not enough shit. And Pete, oh. I just used to turn off, you know. I just used to turn off, but, you know, for me to get there, it'd take me hours to get there. And when I got there, I wish I hadn't got, gone there. But he was just a nice old boy. Um, well, I wasn't say nice old boy. He wasn't a lot, a lot um, older than me. But he was just gone on that sulfate, on that base. He just absolutely ripped him apart, mate. And he became so paranoid. And he just became so dangerous. That so dangerous that he hit someone across the head with a lump of wood because he thought he was nicking his stuff and it wasn't for me the fact that I dived in that water and pulled him up he'd have got to die more likely I'd have died too you know if I hadn't took my boots off mate I'd have gone straight to the bottom <laughs> don't worry about that do you know but I pulled him up I saved his life you know what I mean and you know and for me to even do that to you know blow air into his lungs and push on his lungs and all that guy and make him breathe was something that I've never practised but I'd done it, you know, and and when I'd done it, I looked at Peter with disgust, mate. I said, see you, you shouldn't even be around, mate. Do you know, I said, you want to fuck off, you know. I couldn't stop. I was sorry swearing, but I couldn't help it. And to tell him, fuck off, you know. And he went, and the kid not cut the plants and went. But I don't blame the kid for doing that. I don't blame the kid for doing that. Um, Peter, a bit, if Peter knew where he lived, he'd have fucking been around his house. He had a walk there with a dog. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> he was mad. Anyway, just a little, little video, yeah, about him. I'm not, I am running him down to a certain extent. Um, but to another extent, I'm not, you know, the, 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 he was, he was a dangerous geezer. Um, the craze were petrified of him when he was in prison. You know, he was in, I think he was in with Wedge at one, st in one stage. He was been in Baltimore, uh, so he's been in Baltimore, Ronnie and Reggie, he's been in Ronnie, and he knows, you know, he knows um, how they are. He's just overpowered, mate. He was just a dangerous man. I should imagine uh, there are a few people, ex-gangsters now, maybe that know Peter Gibbs and can tell you more about him than, than me. But um, anyway, this is Bang Bang Rail. Just a little video about Peter Gibbs, yeah? Take care and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Yeah?